better. Yes. So thank you, Dr. Nidhi, and uh, thank you, Faba Academy, for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak to the student and uh, uh, tell them about the career opportunity which is available, especially in terms of informatics and data sciences, because it's very close to my heart. Uh, I, I, I belong to this particular discipline, and then since last many years, I'm associated with various research activities as well as academics. So um, uh, what I will do is I will uh, 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 present to uh, all the uh, participants about informatics and data sciences and, uh, and, and, and more of interaction rather than the slides presentation because I need uh, to know what participants want to know about the, about the opportunities which is available in academics and industry. So I will share my screen. So visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So good afternoon, participants and uh, all the attendees. Uh, today's session is about informatics and data sciences. And uh, here, basically, we will be looking into uh, the scopes of uh, informatics and data sciences and what are the career opportunities which are available, especially for the science students in academics and industry. So agenda of uh, today's uh, uh, discussion is on, first, uh, I'll let you know, like uh, to understand the concept of informatics and data sciences, the competencies and skills required for you to fit into the industry and academia, and uh, what are the various programs which are available in India and globally, especially with the universities or uh, the centers who offer informatics and data sciences program. What are the scopes of uh, informatics and data sciences? What are the career opportunities in informatics and data sciences? And towards the end, we will have question and answer session and uh, a lot of discussions about the career opportunities. So before uh, we uh, go into the details of uh, uh, what data science and informatics is all about and uh, uh, how, why it is needed, I'll just uh, play two videos, which will uh, make you understand. One is uh, related to informatics and biotechnology and uh, another one is informatics and health so just let me know if uh is it audible the video it's not audible but uh, definitely it's playing okay just a moment Is it audible? No. Um, no, sir. Is it audible to anybody? Sir can try removing his earphones from his laptop. There's a suggestion, sir. Yeah. In other words, we are going to generate somewhere between two and forty. Is it audible? Yes, sir. It's not audible. Next decade. And that's only the human genome data. Life sciences can nowadays also obtain measurements on millions of proteins, metabolites, and their interactions. To make sense of enormous volumes of complex data, interdisciplinary researchers are needed to combine knowledge from biology, computer science, and statistics forming an essential component of modern day life science research this field is known as bioinformatics one place where this work is carried out is at the utrecht bioinformatics center studying the right data can lead to truly groundbreaking discoveries by analyzing millions of DNA sequence fragments through high-performance computing we were able to bring to light new unknown organisms by identifying the 0.1% of a human genome that differs from person to person, we can explain just why two people never look the same. And by predicting the structures of proteins in a cell, we are beginning to understand why some of us get sick while others live long, healthy lives. These are the reasons why Utrecht Science Park promotes the sharing of bioinformatics expertise and the combining of different disciplines. 
the another one is related to uh, healthcare sector Talk to me, honey. Oh, okay. How are you feeling? Tell me how you're feeling. Okay, yeah. uh, we don't dance it later. <laughs> Folks, I just have a couple of questions for you. Okay, my name is Brian. I just need a little bit more information, okay? Okay. Any other medical problems I need to be aware of other than high blood pressure and high cholesterol? No, not that I know of. No. Are there any medications aside from lisinopril, simvastatin, and aspirin 81 that you're taking right now? Uh -huh. No, no. He just started slurring his words. I don't know what happened. No, no, we'll it's going to be fine, folks. We're going to take care of you, okay? I'll be all right. Doctor, I'm sending over the patient's info right now. Our ETA in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing his bottles now. I'm coming to meet you. Mr. Green. Dr. Isaac. So, Mr. Green, I'm going to record a short video for our records, okay? Yeah. Record. All right. Mr. Green, would you raise your arms for me, please? That's it. Very good. Okay. Set. Now, Mr. Green, we believe you may be experiencing a stroke. Oh. We're going to get an emergency T scan right away, okay? Let's get him out of there. Sorry. The patient is a 70-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension and hyperlipidemia, presenting with two hours right-side weakness and expressive aphasia. The patient denies neurological deficits and uh, additional symptoms. Send a message to on-call neurologist. 70-year-old male on aspirin presenting with signs of left MCA occlusion for two hours, stroke scale of seven, hemodynamically stable. Requesting remote teleconsult ASAP, do we administer TPA? Call Dr. Isaac. Hi, Julia. CT scan just came in. Have you taken a look? Taking a look now. I see no evidence of hemorrhage. Can we get the patient on a video, please? On my way. I'm sure I'm you now. Mr. and Mrs. Green, I've brought in the neurologist for a teleconsult. Could you, uh, Mr. Green, please show me your teeth? Okay, now can you please close your eyes and raise your arms? Okay, now can you say, early bird gets the worm from Any contraindications to TPA? None. Okay, I'm going to send you my recommendations right now. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? Thank you, Julia. This screen, it could have been far worse. Uh, we caught it just in time, and we're going to continue to give him just the very best care that we can. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Participants you must have seen like uh, issues why data is important to uh, not only the health sectors but also for the other sectors and when it comes to the health am i audible hello yes sir yes sir you are yeah so uh, that is why uh, the point we need to discuss here is why data is important and why the data has to reach to everyone within a short span of time or maybe within a fraction of seconds and and especially when we talk about data in healthcare sector uh, because yes, we deal with the human, uh, these data should be available to each and every one, those who are in care of patient. Because I am, uh, my specialization is health informatics and I have closely uh, uh, dealt with this kind of situation where, where data uh, becomes an important, especially for the patient, those who come to the emergency area or uh, those who are treated in emergency and casualty area. And how critical it is to provide such data uh, to healthcare professionals uh, or those who are healthcare team, those who are there in um, uh, in care of patients, and it becomes very important. And uh, you know, like most of the hospital, if you take an example of Indian scenario, if you take example, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, government hospitals, where if you go and ask for a, a, a data of your previous visit, uh, definitely it will not be available. And they may search, or they may take one hour to search and look into different paper-based files and try to search those data and try to tell you. And uh, 
and you will not have a patience to sit for one hour and uh, wait for the data. And in, the, in, in case if the patient is in emergency, uh, patient uh, uh, every second count. And uh, definitely, they're the, they're the, they're the, not only the uh, uh, healthcare team, but also the normal individual, those who are uh, uh, reaching to the healthcare facility, they also expect that, yeah, some kind of uh, information system, why this hospital don't have, and uh, why uh, 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 it's taking too much time to provide me such data. So, or my uh, patient's data. So that is where the, 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 uh, uh, the importance of the informatics and data sciences, come. data sciences comes. Informatics and data sciences comes. So uh, before we go into the detail of uh, why we need informatics and data sciences, uh, these are the three important uh, keywords which I thought we will start with it and then we will go ahead with it. Uh, and I know uh, all, all of you, those who are attending this particular session is from the life sciences or the science graduates. And uh, uh, I need not speak about the life sciences because you all are studying uh, the particular subject, which, uh, which basically the study of living organism. It can be human, it can be uh, 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 animal or it can be anyone those who are uh, uh, living in this particular world or living in, uh, in this particular earth and uh, which includes the biology botany geology microbiology physiology biochemistry or any other related as as i just now i i explained to you about that the importance of data for the healthcare or for the patients whereas informatics basically it's a use of information communication technology or certain computational processing analysis why we need we need uh, to create the kind of database, kind of a, a centralized database or centralized repository from where the data can be accessed at any point of time by anyone, those who require it. And that is what is lacking with the present healthcare industry or present uh, any, any industry. When you talk about, uh, uh, if you go to a government, uh, government uh, in, uh, offices and you ask for a data, they will search for uh, piles and piles. That is why the, the digital uh, India uh, mission was initiated to streamline the process of not only uh, uh, the healthcare, but also the entire industry, entire uh, uh, offices, entire the government, as well as the public and the private institutions. When, when, when it comes to the data sciences, basically it is all about using the tools, algorithms, and machine learning principles. Why? To discover the hidden pattern, which is available in the raw data. Many times it happens, uh, uh, you must have seen like uh, you may be having maybe thousand or two thousand. Suppose you take a survey. I will tell you example. Suppose you take a survey of uh, uh, the the uh, the behavior of uh, uh, the people towards uh, sexual transmitted diseases, and you have maybe a uh, ten thousand or twenty thousand or lakh of participants' data, and you want to analyze it. Uh, definitely, uh, you need to and 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 uh, if you have captured those data on paper. Uh, it's difficult for you to analyze also. First, you need to fill into, fill those data into the system and then analyze it. And you need to have certain tools to analyze those, maybe a huge data. And and talk about, when you talk about the healthcare, yes. Uh, on a daily basis, like a lot of data is getting, which is getting generated. And this is where the, the, the challenge comes. Challenge is collecting those data. And as I said, most of the data nowadays, uh, uh, the industry has realized the importance of uh, IT into it, and then they are, they are doing it. But still, still uh, it, is, it, is, it is limited to only few institutions. So, and the challenge which they have uh, with them is to collect this huge amount of data, store it in a particular area. If you go to, a, uh, I will tell you an example of any, any institution which is running since last 50, 60 years, and those who have not adopted any kind of automated system, if you go and see their offices, they will have piles of files, a huge go down where, and the, the moment you start searching uh, certain information of last, maybe um, just two years back or three years back, they have to have a great deal of time in searching those. So storage, yes, is a huge, uh, uh, for example, I will tell you for the, for the, any hospital, storing the patient's data and patient's data, you know, every day it is growing. Suppose you take a hospital of uh, 2000 bed, uh, 2000 beds or, 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 or maybe 2500 beds where the patient's coming. You take all Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, the best example where almost more than 10,000 patients are coming daily. Just imagine the kind of information is getting generated from 10,000 patients. And, uh, you know, it's not completely automated. So just imagine when a patient comes getting their data, how it is difficult. When a patient comes on a frequent basis, 
uh, and uh, want to know like suppose for the next visit the patient comes after one month and try to uh, search for his previous data or previous 10 visits uh, data it is difficult and uh, when you have a manual system it definitely uh, the challenge comes to the processing and analysis and the most important thing is transmission from one location to the other location and dissemination of these information to the end user the most important challenge comes when it comes to the accessibility because everyone wants real time access of patient of any any data whether it whether it is a patient data or any other data just now the first video talks about the genome data and you have a huge amount of data and there are there are a lot of uh, hidden pattern you need to identify and uh, there the challenge comes how to uh, when when you uh, do everything on paper it's a bit difficult you need to have certain tools who can find out based on uh, maybe uh, 10 parameters or 20 parameters or maybe uh, 100 parameters so there the inf there the role of informatics and data sciences come which simplify the process of all these challenges with, from storage till the real time access of patients data and uh, what data science does yes once the data electronic data or automated data is available to us now it's easier for us to play with it but to play with it, we need to have certain tools. It's not like uh, Excel does everything. Excel does all wonders. We need to have certain data analytics tool. Even uh, most of the research, uh, uh, if you if you are into the research, uh, you must have seen. You, mainly, we use it either uh, R or we we use it SPSS. But again, dealing with a huge data, you require certain uh, certain analytical tool to not only the structure but also identify the hidden pattern. As I was telling, the 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 so these kind of uh, particular um, tools, I will next slide and uh, further slides, I will show you what kind of tools you are uh, basically you need to have such skills on that. So these tools allow the uh, uh, to go for the predictive model, predict what will happen to suppose a patient comes with certain symptoms and uh, they want to predict the patients what will happen to the patients maybe after if, if the similar symptoms continues and if it's not treated or if, if uh, this particular treatment what is going to happen with the patient you need to have such information in place and you need to have certain tools who can which can be used for analyzing patients uh, data and of course as i was mentioning about the forecasting uh, you need to know what is what we, what is going to happen in the future for example i will tell you one of the example like uh, when when it comes to the weather forecasting how it is automated because there are a lot of algorithms they have put up uh, and they have various tools which analyze and say that yes this particular uh, 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 the weather condition is this and it's going to be this and and, and the extent of uh, the damage would be this so they have all kind of predictive modeling uh, where they utilize it uh, as i was mentioning about that see the data uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, if you look into the source also, big data in the healthcare hype and hope. In 2012, uh, they expected to, they, they uh, measured and uh, they said like, okay, we, we have almost 500 petabytes uh, of uh, automated uh, data which is available of the patients. But they have also uh, projected that in 2020, it will be 25,000 petabytes. If the hospital or the healthcare centers or any research center start uh, adapting the automated systems to capture these data. So just imagine, but the, here the challenge comes, okay, you have 25,000 petabytes of data, but how you're going to analyze this? That is why the, the role of data science comes. The role of data analytics comes. The role of, uh, uh, the role of data scientists start. So as I was mentioning, you need to have competency and skills for uh, analyzing the data and um, uh, and, and, and coming out with certain, uh, certain uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, models or certain uh, kind of uh, uh, information which assist the anyone, any industry, because I'm, I'm, I'm giving example of only healthcare, but any other industry, it's any research organization. So these are the competencies which are skills required for informatics and data sciences, uh, both technical and non-technical, if you see, uh, the person should be uh, uh, having a degree in informatics and data sciences. Uh, if the person is into the life sciences and person is having already having master degree, person can easily go for having some of the crash courses, maybe a short term courses for any of these uh, uh, IT and analytical low languages of R programming, Python, Python coding, Hadoop platform, SQL database coding. Apache Spark, machine learning, data analytics, and visualization because this allowed them to get uh, fit into the industry. Industry where they require a data scientist, they require 
but along with that there, there, there are some some kind of non technical skills are also needed which is uh, applicable to everyone you need to have an intellectual curiosity like yes i need to do this i i want to do this so basically what happened is when when you have such a uh, curiosity in place you can do wonders with these skills and uh, as we all know that individual uh, alone cannot do anything you need to have a teamwork you need to you need to have a concept of teamwork and you need to know how to work with the team and uh, definitely your communication skill and overall management of workplace should be there and uh, to have a better and the best data scientist uh, these are the data science tools this is best to learn and uh, these data science tools allow you to uh, understand as i was mentioning earlier that you need to play with the data you need to play with the data and uh, come out with certain uh, certain analysis certain uh, predictions certain uh, uh, forecasting certain uh, information which will allow you to understand Uh, which will allow your team or the further those who have asked for it to understand the pattern into uh, this kind of information when we look into the when you take a broader look from the industry point of view uh, uh, i've taken one example from health catalyst uh, if you see the health the state of data science is what they the, the industry look for the industry look for uh, a data science scientist to have a primary skills of data analysis or python data mining and machine learning which i have shown earlier in earlier slides and uh, you need to have a educational background of computer sciences uh, business admin statistics mathematics and physics and don't worry if you if you are uh, from a science uh, background you can choose any any of these there are there are uh, uh, programs available not only uh, and don't worry if you are if you are not uh, it savvy also but these programs will allow you to use this data use this kind of analytical tool and uh, uh, acquire these skills because as i mentioned the skills are required to sustain in the industry and if you have really an interest in going towards this informatics and data sciences uh, i think you are in the right path because this is the requirement of today's industry because there are not many people that are not many professionals and there is a dearth of professionals in this particular area and uh, you talk about indian scenario yes it is i will tell you in further in the further slides why it is in india uh these kind of uh, professionals are not available uh, in in uh, as per the demand of the industry so these highest education levels are as i as i mentioned uh, uh you need to have a degree uh, in place a uh, bachelor's masters and the phd and uh, as you know the industry is growing uh, you must have seen most of the hospitals now they have started adopting electronic health records or most of the public health institutions started adopting the automated system most of the uh, because the entire research depends on this kind of information system because research cannot happen on paper research happen only when uh, certain tools which are available which allow the researcher to understand the pattern of data to understand uh, what is hidden into the data to search for it and uh, top industries employing data scientists are as as uh, as i mentioned it industries um, computer software education banking and financial services and uh, uh, you, you can see like the data science science involved from analysis and and and, and creating the knowledge because when you uh, dig those data when you mine those data and try to find out what is there what is hidden in that particular data uh, definitely you create knowledge and this knowledge needs to be disseminated that is why if you see the a uh, uh, lot of research articles are coming now like uh, about the informatics and data sciences so as a life science graduates or the science graduates uh, with these skills and competencies of informatics and data sciences basically you will be bridging the gap uh, you will be bridging the gap of life sciences and technology why i will tell you as when a when a uh, if, so, uh, example i will give you of healthcare suppose a doctor require uh, a tool which can analyze the patient's data uh, based on my research i will tell you uh, we have developed one decision support system which allowed the oncologist to understand the pattern and uh, the stages of cancer and accordingly what further he needs to do so when a doctor speak to a it professional what happened is 
the IT professionals find it difficult to understand what doctors speaks because doctors really use various medical jargons or health jargons, which are IT professionals difficult to understand. And when IT professionals speak to uh, the uh, healthcare professionals and the doctor, the doctor finds it difficult to understand. So who is bridging the gap? As a uh, as, 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 a, as a graduate or as a uh, informatics and data science graduates, you would know better what doctor speaks and what uh, 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 IT professional speaks or uh, what a researcher speaks and what IT professional speaks. So you can bridge the gap. You can get the requirement from the, the person who has asked for an automated system and uh, using data analytics tools and, and inform it to the IT professionals and IT professionals accordingly will develop and give you this. So that is why you are bridging the gap of life science and technology because you are the one who is, uh, if, if you have the skills, if you are acquiring the skills, you will definitely bridge this gap of uh, uh, life sciences and technology. But to, as I mentioned earlier, to bridge the gap, you need to have certain skills. And these skills are uh, acquired uh, through a uh, certain degree uh, um, programs. And these programs are available uh, in terms of certificates or diploma, bachelor degree, postgraduate degree, and the doctoral degree. Because uh, you know, uh, if you are if you want to really go for the research, better you uh, pursue it and uh, complete your doctoral degree and uh, go for the postdoc or or further. Because the research has no end. If you really go for, especially informatics and data sciences, uh, the, the research in informatics and data sciences has no limits. You can think of any, 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 any kind of developing any kind of applications and assisting people to uh, to simplify the process and uh, come out with the new models, come out with the new methodologies, come come out, come out with the new modalities. And uh, universities across the globe offer such programs at, uh, at this level. These are the top 10 universities offering informatics and data sciences program across globe. Um, as you can see on screen, uh, informatics and data sciences, these are the top 10 universities. You can even search through. You can search through this link or you can search through any link. Uh, wherever you see the top 10 universities, these are the top 10 universities which are there in the informatics and data sciences. Uh, they have different programs, uh, bachelor's, master's, and the doctoral degree program where uh, they offer uh, and they expect the, the science graduates to come to their, their uh, uh, campus and learn these kind of skills. And you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is what the demand of the industry, present industry, because they have data, they do not know what to do. They want certain professionals who can, who can simplify the process of acquiring the data and uh, uh, analyzing and disseminating it, but they don't have such professionals in hand because uh, not many people are qualified in this area. If they have also, they have learned any of these analytical tool and try to, but no, there is a, there is, there is, there is a dearth of professionals who has having a, a, a specialized degree in this particular area. When it comes to India, uh, universities which are offering informatics program, I have uh, listed few uh, because uh, uh, at the beginning, as, as I said, why in India, this particular field is new because not many institutions offer such programs. Not many institutions such pro offer programs. In the programs also, it is in, it's in terms of health informatics. And uh, as you can see the list, it's very few very few institution, other institution that they offer also, as I mentioned, they offer very short term program, maybe a three month program or a six month program, but not very full fledged program in, um, in, in, in health informatics or the health informatics or as such in general, uh, no such institution offer informatics and data science altogether. The, the institution which offer health informatics, uh, what they have done is they have included in their curriculum itself is a data science. So. Definitely, uh, if you are looking for uh, such universities, uh, there are lists where you can uh, approach and you can contact them. And uh, and if you look for the global universities, definitely you can go ahead with searching these universities and try to acquire information and try to see like how these uh, universities programs are and how you are you are going to get benefited with that. So what is the scope of informatics and data sciences? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the inst institution have a lot of data in place. That is why organizations are drowning in information but dying of thirst at the same time, because uh, they do not have 
much analytical tool, much informatics application, which can be used. And uh, and 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 as I mentioned, they 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 don't have uh, um, informatics professionals in place. So example we as i as i mentioned example i have given of health science or healthcare sector so analyzing disease pattern and tracking a diseases outbreak and transmission to improve public health surveillance and speed responses turning large amount of data into actionable information to identify need provide services and predict and prevent the crisis because if i want to know with this particular situation whether there will be, there will be a community outbreak how i will come to know if I have data in hand, yes, data in hand, definitely maybe the data of the entire uh, state. Suppose a state there is a, maybe uh, I have uh, 10 lakhs uh, uh, people survey, but what I'm going to do with this data, unless and until if, if somebody can come and help me in, in, in uh, looking to the data and tell that, yes, this is what is going to happen if situation continues so that the crisis can be prevented. So we need to have certain application in place. There the role of there the scope of informatics and data sciences comes in. There the role of data informatics and data sciences comes in. You need to have certain automated applications to capture the data and you need to have certain data analytical concepts where which or data analytical tool which can be incorporated into these automated systems so that you capture automatically. You must have seen there are a lot of uh, 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 variable devices now available. You, you, you also must be using it uh, which uh, collect your heart rate now you you on a daily basis you see that yes uh, uh, today's heart rate uh, while while exercising or while uh, doing the physical exercise this this was my heart rate and this was but what happened what do you do with the data what do we do with that particular data do you analyze it back and analyze do that that particular variable device allow you to sit back and analyze that yes for last 30 days my heart rate is uh, not not normal do you sit back and analyze it? That, 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 that question comes. We need to have certain system in place that yes, if your heart rate falls within this to this, you have uh, you have a chances of getting this kind of disease or, or you contact your medical or your uh, you contact doctors, your family doctors or somebody who can tell you about this. We, we have wearable devices. We have, we do that. But how, how we are analyzing it? We need to have. Maybe towards the end, I will show you one video which uh, uh, which is which uh, tells about the variable devices and how the data is captured and uh, how the data is being utilized. So we need to have so and so we need to have a certain system in place which correlate the various health indicators and associated factors. Uh, a patient's physical data with the patient's patient's history and physical uh, examination findings with the patient's lab findings. Patients history and physical examination or patients uh, uh, present uh, healthcare data with the patients follow up data. So certain certain health indicators, how the correlation can be created. And I, as, I, as I am I'm telling again and again, it cannot be done on paper. It can be done only with the automated system which you have and very can very, very search. Suppose if you go to a doctor and ask uh, 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 and, 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 and maybe a 10th time, I knew you, and, and, and if you see some patient who was suffering with the cancer and for the cancer patients, what happened is the patient has to come for, a, for maybe a 10, 20, 30 or maybe, maybe, the, maybe more number of visits. And if the doctor don't have a previous data, how a doctor is going to and, and uh, if you have manual system in place after a certain period of time, uh, maybe a patient's record will be of 200 to 300 pages going through all the 200 and 300 pages and see the past, what, ha what had happened to the patients and what kind of treatment I have given, what is the, uh, whether th this particular treatment is. So if we can design certain tool, which we allow the doctor is to see the progress of recovery or the progress of deterioration, so that these will allow the doctor to, to, to uh, see, uh, yes, this is where, uh, this is what I need to change the modalities, this I need to change the uh, drugs, or this I need to change the treatment line pattern. So that is, so we need to have a set, we need to have certain analytical tool for comparative effectiveness research to determine more clinically relevant and cost effective, because I'm giving examples because I'm, I'm, I'm my background is from uh, health sciences, that is why, but the, the application is same everywhere. Any industry you see, any industry, banking industry or any industry you see, 
uh, if if you are going for a, a industry which is which is which is working into the genome, which is working into uh, if you take a pharmaceutical industry, how of how a pharmaceutical industry uh, look for a new drugs? Suppose uh, uh, the, the present epidemics, if you see the COVID nineteen or any other when 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 certain outbreak happen, how how they come out with it because they have a lot of data in place and they know and they 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 try to uh, correlate these uh, health indicators of the entire population try to see what is common and how these common uh, thing can be um, uh, taken care of so match the treatment with the outcome and predict patients at the risk of disease and readmissions and provide efficient care so they they the uh, the informatics and data sciences scopes um, or this is one of the example. It's a garden model. I think uh, 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 if if you must have seen it before, it it all it overall talk about the data sciences and the application of data sciences and their intent. So if you see the x-axis, talks about the transactional reporting and the predictive analysis, and what are the degree of intelligence which is needed. It it uh, it starts from the standard report, which tells you. Suppose you go to the uh, if you have a a file of your medical if you have a medical report it says like what happened to the what happened to you when it comes to the report uh, information system how many cases and how often and where where exactly the problem is you need to get this particular information through dashboard or the queries what action is needed a kind of alert suppose uh, a system is uh, a developed a informatics application is developed for a or a hospital and uh, they have put up the uh, patient's uh, uh, allergic information to that patient is allergic to certain suppose a patient is allergic to penicillin so a patient comes to a doctor and uh, a doctor uh, the moment uh, give uh, try to prescribe certain uh, antibiotics or any other thing which the patient is allergic to and the, the data is already uh, saved into the system what happened the data uh, the system itself and system is having uh, the features to pop up and uh, give alert the system will automatically pop up with the screen and tell that patient is allergic to particular this particular antibiotic so this particular agent so what happened this alert the healthcare professionals to prescribe such and antibiotics and and you know if you uh, read through the medical uh, medication error uh, because it's uh, reported in uh, us it's 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 well documented especially in a few countries so they have data of medication error and if you see in indian scenario we don't have such data in place because we never record it we never have we don't have such system in place and if it's there also it's limited to very limited institution in india if you talk about uh, informatics application in hair hospitals in india i would say it is around maximum eight to ten percent very few only tertiary care centers not even the medium-sized hospital now what further happened with the forecasting and extrapolation like how will this particular uh, trend will influence the future outcome and go for the predictive modeling and optimization so that is where where we have moved from the predictive to prescriptive analytics and that is only possible because of these analytical tool and uh, if you have skills in uh, if you have acquired skills in this kind of predictive uh, or prescriptive analytics definitely this will allow you to do wonders as I, that's why I'm using these words. You can do wonders because people are looking for such skilled professionals. The industry is looking for the skilled professionals because, as I said, I'm, I'm repeating again and again that the there are the demand is high and uh, the supply is very low because we have very limited institution who offer such programs. So this is the continuation of this uh, previous uh, slide. If you see, uh, and in the red uh, uh, shade, uh, the green shade is it's talked about what kind of applications, what kind of uh, applications can be used for uh, their analytical tool can be used for uh, used for such kind of uh, um, applications. <laughs> Now coming to the most important thing, which most of you were looking for, it's a career opportunity for you. Uh, if you have such skills in place, your um, this kind of opportunities are available at, at the universities uh, because now the, uh, especially in India, universities have started realizing to have uh, such uh, programs in place. So you, if you have such skills in place, and definitely you will be well placed in the in the universities uh, as an academician. 
and uh, and researchers. Pharmaceutical companies, yes, they look for because as I mentioned earlier, the pharmaceutical companies deal with piles of data, a huge amount of data. And that is where the concept of big data came into place. Because uh, if you talk about the healthcare industry or pharmaceutical industry, they look for a huge amount of data. That is where the concept of big data came into place. And when you have big data, definitely you need to have certain analytical tool to uh, a certain analytical tool to uh, to uh, to analyze those data and give uh, information to the organization. I'm talking about the pharmaceutical companies. You would give this information to the organization. A particular agent is uh, uh, is very much uh, suiting to a particular type of patients or a particular type of group. Clinical and scientific research institution, bioinformatic companies, as the first video talks about that. Biotech companies, yes, and biomedical industries because. Uh, the biomedical industry, again, the biomedical industries are basically involved in uh, uh, developing certain equipments uh, in the healthcare or any other industries where uh, they, but when they, when they develop application, definitely they try to automate the entire system. I will tell you, uh, suppose you take an MRI machine or any other uh, radio, radio, radiology uh, or imaging uh, modalities. Imaging modalities now most uh, earlier, uh, uh, the imaging modalities used to be manual where they used to have a black film in, uh, they used to have a black film, uh, which used to take time. Maybe a patient has to wait for 10 to 15 minutes to get the film developed and then only the, pay, the, the doctor used to see that. But now what happened, uh, uh, now what happened is uh, this particular has been taken by the PACS, picture archiving and communication system. So the moment the, if you, you all must have gone to a hospital where these kind of systems are available, the moment the your image is captured by these machines, biomedical machines, uh, automated biomedical uh, imaging modality machines. So what happened is uh, it's within a fraction of a second it is available on doctor's desktop. And uh, suppose a doctor wants to know what is happened, uh, what happened to you, and uh, suppose he is having certain doubts. If uh, the the uh, decision support facility is uh, implemented, because uh, I'll give you an example of the decision support system in imaging modalities. What have uh, there's one system where uh, the the image has been uh, circulated among maybe 10,000, 20,000 knowledge base uh, images or, or or database where. The, this particular image is uh, being um, uh, the pattern will look into the this particular image will be uh, run through the this 10,000 or 50,000 images and uh, this image will uh, identify the similar pattern in any of the image and come back and say that okay patient is having such a problem so the biomedical industry yes they look for informatics and data science graduates or any other institution will deal with the life science data so who will be the potential employers? As I mentioned, universities, IITs, or any other institution, uh, healthcare institution, research institution, pharmaceutical companies, IT service providers, biotechnology companies, or any other scientific department, the government of maybe of Department of Science and Technology, Biotechnology, Scientific and Industrial Research, and National Informatics Center. In India, uh, just, to, just to add in India, uh, when it comes to the public health, the development of informatics uh, application in the public health sectors, uh, uh, organization National Informatics Center usually take this initiative along with uh, the Center for Development in Advanced Computing and then they do uh, uh, provide solutions to the healthcare sectors as well as the other sectors, pharmaceutical sectors. This is the career path. This is where this kind of uh, um, uh, jobs which there are many more, but this kind of uh, uh, listed designation, which or listed uh, um, uh, career, which uh, you can pursue. If, but only thing is, you need to acquire such skills in place. Uh, if you have such skills, definitely you can work in any of these roles. Don't worry uh, if you are a science graduate and if you uh, really want to. There are two ways you can even you uh, go for the life sciences uh, along with the informatics, or you can go for the pure informatics, where you can be uh, a software developer. You can be uh, uh, database programmers, you can be computer analyst, or if you are combining your uh, life sciences with the uh, informatics, definitely you can go for any other, as I, as I listed earlier, bio, bioinformatics analyst, you can go for the biology uh, database managers, you can go for uh, modeling assistants, uh, for, and a computational genomic specialist, or any other. There are, <clears throat> the roles are many. But only thing is you need to identify based on your interest, 
based on um, based on your uh, background or based on what you want to uh, uh, what you want to be i have uh, taken few uh, articles which uh, talks about the alternative careers for biotechnology and life science graduates uh, if you read i have taken only few you can maybe count it's around 10 so these all articles talks about the career of science and life science graduates in informatics and data sciences you can take any of these if you see the forecast also why it is if you see one of the forecasts they say the global laboratory informatics market is estimated to reach us dollar of 3.8 billion by 2024 from uh, 2.6 so a com compound annual growth rate if you see is a 7.5 percent during the forecast period so a lot of surveys if you see this actually uh, motivate us or motivate us to uh, work in informatics sector as i said informatics doesn't mean only you are going for bioinformatics or you're going for there a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, options are available only thing is you need to choose where you want to work you need to choose where where exactly you want to where you want to pursue where wh what is your career path which you want to choose it as 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 one of the uh, uh, in in in, in no, 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 no of the article says an explosion of biomedical informatics area i think uh, uh, this uh, articles can be uh, you can go through it will motivate you it will tell you more about the 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 opportunities which are available for biomedic bioinformatics and data sciences uh, when I was searching through the PubMed also, and uh, as you can see in the right hand side uh, of the screen, it shows like the number of articles which are available, especially with the life science informatics, or uh, scope of informatics, or informatics, or life science informatics. These are the different key keywords. So I thought I'll just see, see like what literature says about it. So I got to know a lot of uh, uh, articles which have been written on, on, on informatics and life sciences or life science informatics so because this is this is uh, where uh, as i said this is where we need to uh, this is what the industry require now this is what the industry is looking for this is what the present days requirement of the industry and uh, definitely uh, if you acquire such skills definitely uh, you are going to, as I was, I'm repeating again, and again, the words, you can do wonders in the industry and you can reach to a highest level of your career path. So towards the end, I would say, uh, informatics and data sciences is the need of heart for the industry. And as a science graduate, you can easily pursue this particular, uh, area of, uh, uh, of education and whatever you do acquire the best skill of informatics and data sciences and any industry will any industry not only i'm take, talk, talking about the healthcare any industry whether it's a pharmaceutical industry or any other uh, industry which uh, which deals with the life science data definitely will will absorb you like anything because they are looking for such uh, professionals those who have such skills in place and definitely you will get fit into these and it's and 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 in india yes as i was I'm, I'm i'm repeating again and again that in india this kind of uh, skills are very much needed because uh, people are ready to offer jobs but industry is ready to offer jobs but they don't have professionals in place and uh, this is where uh, uh, if you have skills you definitely fit into that so uh, i wish all of you uh, a good career in um, yes because we are talking about informatics and data sciences I, a good career in informatics and data sciences thank you now uh, floor is open for question and answer thank you so much uh, dr sena this was a very well uh, put uh, presentation on informatics and data sciences it started from the very basic and what are the career paths and how to reach to them as just like any other webinar that we have had earlier the question here is uh, to acquire those specific skill sets that are required by the industry. And most of the work needs to be done at the student's end in order to find what are those and train themselves using online courses, using so many platforms so that you become uh, what industry requires. And uh, it is then that the job opportunity arises automatically. 
So um, before we just uh, dive into the question and answer um, round, may I now share with you the link, all of you, the link to uh, the Google form where uh, you will find the information, you will fill in the information for getting your certificates. So here it is. And now moving on to the um, question and answer round. So Professor Sinha, uh, the first question was from Shivendra and uh, um, the question is, data entry and data curation are the biggest challenge to even begin the data analytics. What one organization should do as best practices to overcome these challenges? Uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the, during my presentation also that uh, this is the biggest challenges which most of the industry is having. And that, that is what we need to first identify what is our requirement. Because this is where uh, we need to look into. We need to identify, suppose for example, I will give a, a, a hospital. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that most of the government hospitals nowadays have, or maybe a public hospital, very few hospitals have adapted the automated system. Now, the major challenge is to have uh, 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 the collected data on a real-time basis with the doctors. So they need to identify what kind of information system or the automation they look for. Identify from each and every stakeholders try to identify what they need. It is not that you just, uh, today you buy one application and uh, put up into on the head of uh, all the uh, uh, people, those who are working in the institution, definitely they will not. So this is where these challenges can only overcome when you involve the end user into uh, the system. And then identify, then you go ahead slowly in uh, identifying the requirements and then developing application Presentation of those applications in front of them, identify their, whether this is suiting and then only you go for it. So again, yes, this is what uh, basically is needed for overcoming this particular challenge. Okay. Um, so the next question, the next two questions were actually similar. And they say that there are, there is a lot of scope in a data science and informatics. Uh, and in these, uh, it has its own rainbows and colors. But the question is, what is what should be the best head start for a fresher? Yes, uh, for a freshers, as I mentioned, uh, to acquire skills, to acquire such uh, skills in, you need to join some uh, formal program. You can join any any of the formal program, whether it is uh, related to health informatics, where it's related to computational biology informatics, or any other. So they need to first identify as, as, I, as I was telling again and again that for a freshers, yes, if you, if you are basically from the science background, you identify a program, you identify a program which will fit into your requirement, which is as per your interest. And then all you go ahead. And as I mentioned earlier, a formal program uh, is very much needed. You, you, if you, if you are, suppose you are a science graduate and if you are doing a very short term programs, you will be limited in the industry, a particular place, but you cannot go higher. You need to join a, a program. Suppose you are, today you are, suppose uh, 2020, you have completed your uh, science uh, graduation and then look for the program. I think you, uh, uh, most of the programs are now started. Now you would have, you would have searched before also that what kind of programs related to informatics and data sciences are available as I've listed so many uh, universities name. And I'm sure if you, if you uh, had uh, this uh, interest, you would have, you, you, you would have already searched for this. So look for program as per your interest, join it, complete the program. And then you, uh, uh, as I mentioned, industry are looking for uh, such graduates in place, but you have to have formal program. And that is based on your interest, whether you are going for a business analytics, you're going for a health analytics, or you're going for any other. You need to identify as per your interest and go ahead with it. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is, what is the difference between data science and big data analytics? Uh, big data analytics is actually uh, comes under the domain of data sciences. Big data analytics, basically, as I mentioned, data is growing um, uh, with enormous speed and, uh, and uh, this data is difficult to store. And that is why the term, uh, they have coined this particular term as a big data. Big data, which is in terabyte, which is in maybe a petabyte, automated data. 
So big data analytics is, is one of the domain of data sciences, which comes under the umbrella of data sciences. Great. Uh, next question is, which field is more promising uh, to work in and make your career? Is it either software engineering or data science? <laughs> Depends on your interest. As I said, like if, if you, if you uh, are uh, uh, definitely, and, and, and if you have interest, both you can collaborate. Software engineering and uh, data sciences go all uh, together because nowadays most of the application comes with the data science features. Most of the applications come with the data analytics features. I will give you an example. Uh, electronic health record with uh, decision support system features. You capture the patient's data. Uh, try to correlate the patient's physical uh, examination data with the, with the uh, 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 clinical parameters and come out with a certain advice. So what, you, what is happening, you, so you're using a software engineering to develop application and you're using the data science app, uh, skills to put decision support features into the system. So it is not that uh, you, you can use it, utilize both. And the moment you go for the software engineering, now most of the engineering colleges have, uh, 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 if you're going for computer science or you're going for most of the, uh, now, uh, if you look into the engineering colleges also, they have started uh, implementing two to three modules of data sciences also in the for the engineering graduates. So definitely you will be learning data sciences uh, or data analytics and you will be utilizing whatever application if you develop, whether you are applica developing application for the business, your application for healthcare or any other. Uh, great. Uh, so there is this question. Um, I'll, I'll speak because I don't know if it is even relevant. What is the scope for commerce and business management in, in this sector? Please explain. Yes. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, informatics and data science uh, or data analytics work in all the sectors, even the business sector. Suppose, uh, and uh, as a commerce graduate, definitely you can take up this particular area. You can, that is what, and you can go for a program with a business analytics. I will tell you now, Amiti, we have MBA programs. And in MBA program, we have MBA in data sciences. So this kind of graduates, what they do is they, when they go out, they assist the industry in identifying the requirement of the customers. Like what customer require? Suppose, uh, and see, um, you must have seen, uh, I'll give you an example of a mobile phone. You must have seen the mobile phone, uh, maybe within a six month or within two months itself, why they are changing the models and the features because they identify the requirement. They identify what, uh, uh, what customer need and they are the business, business analytics work where as a commerce graduate, definitely you can do wonders. So you identify programs which are related to business analytics and data sciences, do it. And again, I will again repeat, you will do wonders in the industry, business industry. Okay, uh, another question is, what type of companies are suitable for M-Tech bioinformatics pressures? Um, biotech, biotech companies? Um, um, M-Tech, yeah, okay. I'm taking biotechnology, he's telling, or bioinformatics. I'm taking bioinformatics, sir. Yes, so, uh, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, if you're having, I'm taking bioinformatics, you have reached to the uh, uh, position where you can you can work in a bioinformatics company. You can do the companies as uh, Fava, Fava uh, Academy will help you because they have closely associated with the Genome Valley. Definitely, you can have a position there. <laughs> so you will have such, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, you have... Uh, a, a wonderful career actually. Now, if you have um, completed MTech in bioinformatics, definitely uh, it's a, it's a uh, career is, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a glowing actually. You just put up uh, your uh, CV into the LinkedIn and people will take you like anything. So. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Sina. Um, there is this one question and I'm going to read it just as it says. Um, I am studying bioinformatics and I am doing master program of data science uh, separately in an online um, course. Uh, so how can they together be important to me for a better career in this field? See, uh, definitely, I think in the bioinformatics also, you must be learning data sciences. Uh, and separately, you are doing MSc and um, master's in data sciences. Definitely, uh, it is, it is uh, uh, good, but... 
I don't know what extent uh, you are learning in your uh, master's bioinformatics about uh, data sciences, but yes, it goes hand in hand. Informatics, that is why the, the today's session talks about the informatics and data sciences, which is not two domain, it's just come under one umbrella. If you have an automated system in place, you have uh, automated information, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, electronic information in place, definitely you will look for certain tool to analyze it because see, getting data, and storing into a database is of no use unless and until you try to look into the data and try to find something which will help you to uh, uh, design various models. If you talk about the healthcare industry, yes, you can you can uh, uh, see. And the first video itself tells about you can see the hidden pattern, especially in the in your genes. So. Developing automated, applic automated application and then uh, capturing the data and working with the data whether your data science will help you. So definitely the, both the programs, but only thing is uh, online program, I don't know how you are uh, doing it, but uh, this kind of, uh, as I mentioned, this kind of uh, program require on-site training because when you sit in the lab, in front of the instructor I and mean, when the instructor will give you uh, a case and and uh, maybe a database of maybe 10,000 patients or 10,000 uh, uh, business cases and tell you to analyze and tell what is the pattern of this then that will help you but um, I hope you are doing a, 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 a this kind of program from a good university where you have a practical exposure also uh, so there's this another question. How good is it to go with PG diploma courses, be it business analytics or data scientists? Uh, would they really add up to the profile? Yes, definitely. Why not? Because uh, uh, now with the new education policy also, if you see uh, even one year program also has a validity and PG diploma when you do, it's definitely it is having the validity. But I would suggest you should not stop there. Uh, you go further by doing uh, maybe which the, 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 the kind of tools which I have listed, which is required for a data science professionals. If it is not included, do the short term programs and uh, try to do, try to complete it and uh, uh, try to adapt in your career. I think that would help you. Right. Um, so this is another question uh, asking, what is the scope for quantum computers in data science and can we see them in near future? Definitely, you will see them in new near future. Only thing is, these are the high-end uh, application. These are the high-end uh, computational methodology where, which is uh, uh, used in uh, various industry. Uh, but but only thing is, uh, uh, this is this is needed actually. That is why when we talk about data sciences, we need to have tools in place. We need to have high-end technology in place. Then only we can do. Otherwise, sitting in on one desktop and if you feel that you can do everything uh, using one desktop, definitely not. You need to have such application. You need to have some, some, some computational uh, uh, mechanism or instruments in place. Right. Uh, so, sir, we have this last question for the evening and it yeah. is how to start a startup in healthcare informatics? <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I, I think I, I just forgot to mention in my slides that you can work as a freelancer, as an entrepreneur, because people are looking for the, the tools, the automation. I, I, I have seen uh, some of my students, they are working as an entrepreneur. They have uh, come out with certain models, the business models uh, in healthcare, and uh, they have sold that model in a high price. And the moment, uh, suppose you develop an application, I will tell you the one, suppose you develop an application and you are selling to an uh, organization, definitely that organization will be get associated with you for next 20 years, 25 years, if you're promising it to update these application and, uh, and uh, provide them the best services. So as an entrepreneur, definitely you can go ahead with it. There is no problem because, uh, and uh, come out with certain, uh, and I would suggest you come out with certain uh, tools, a certain application, which is novel in nature rather than repeating, which is existing. You that, and for that, you need to study the industry where, where you are, where you want to develop, whether you are working, whether you are want to develop in the business industry or you want to develop in healthcare industry or you want to develop for the pharmaceutical industry. Do something uh, novel in nature because that is why the, that is what the requirement is. Uh, repeating the, uh, or duplicating things which are available, it, it, anybody can do. You do not require to learn uh, informatics and data science in such a uh, or such a formal program. You can do it within maybe a three months or six month program. But when you are uh, uh, when you are uh, having a certain uh, when you are attending certain formal program and acquiring such a great skill, 
definitely you go for a certain application, which is, as I said, novel in nature. You go for the research. As an entrepreneur, you know, definitely you will have a great career. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sena. 